Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and at the time of recording this there seems to be a lot of confusion as to whether Tom Petty's still alive or not but uh, somebody had asked me on Facebook or YouTube, hey are you going to do a true story behind Tom Petty and Guns N' Roses and I had planned on doing this for a long time and I thought maybe now is a good time to do it. I'm a huge Tom Petty fan so I'm hoping that you know the news of him passing isn't true but we'll have to wait and see in the coming days. Now you know, a lot of people, when they think of Tom Petty and Guns N' Roses, they immediately go to that 1989 MTV VMA performance with, where Axel sang two songs with Tom Petty. And Izzy also joined the band on stage, although he's not seen as much in the actual video, but you can see him to the left of Axel. He sang Heartbreak Hotel, and then he also did Free Fallen. Now, I think what a lot of people don't know is that a couple days or a couple weeks prior to that performance, uh, Axel had performed with Tom Petty in Syracuse, New York when Tom Petty was playing a concert there. And the two songs he performed with Tom Petty included Knocking on Heaven's Door and Free Fallen. And these are some photos from the actual gig. And you can actually listen to both of them on YouTube. And I've put the link to both of them down below. Now, Tom Petty was interviewed in the year 2000 by MTV about Guns N' Roses. And he also talked about his thoughts on Axl Rose as a performer, as well as the performance he did with Axl back in 1989 during the VMAs. Here's what he had to say. I'm a bad boy. Cause you don't even miss her. I know I saw Axel do a free phone with uh, Tom Petty. That was cool. We're walking off the stage, and Vince Neil leaps up at the audience and hits Izzy right in the face. My mind's blown, you know, like, wow, this guy just ran up out of the audience and hit Izzy in the face. Now, I think Izzy already had a black eye. I think it was all about some chick or, you know, some mud wrestler or something. Axel is Axel. Take it or leave it. You know, he doesn't give a shit. If you don't like what he does, he could care less. <laughs> you know, I think that rules. <laughs> These guys just sound so spiteful and so angry and so like real and he's a very driven guy you know like probably the most driven person i've ever met where axel was coming from and probably still is is trying to express the lyrics through a visual so if you guys are wondering why vince neil of motley crew got out of the audience and punched izzy stradlin this news report pretty much explains it and the years that followed vince neil and axel rose got into a verbal fight through the press and there was a lot of back and forth about them wanting to actually physically fight each other but in the end nothing ended up happening and some people believe that the song shotgun blues on use your illusion 2 is written about vince neal so here's the news report the 1989 mtv video music awards when vince allegedly took a swing at gnr guitarist izzy stradlin for making passes at his wife it was between us had nothing to do with axel izzy laughs because he's like that guy you know had a full-on free shot, you know, and hit like a powder puff. Axel challenged Vince to fight him outside Tower Records after the awards show. The Headbangers brawl never took place, but Axel challenged Neil again in 1990. Anytime he wants it anywhere, Atlantic City, I don't care. Axel, if you're watching this, I want to challenge you to a fight. It's time to rock and roll. The odds makers had Axel a heavy favorite. His power and with his ability to send Vince up against the ropes will be just too much. I, I like Axel, TKO, early round. <laughs> Axel would kick his ass, I think. I'm gonna watch you bleed! Yo, Vince, you better stay home, homie. As the hype surrounding the fight grew larger, the hatred between the two men grew increasingly passionate. Let's do it like men should do it. Ultimately, Rose and Neil could not bring themselves to pound one another, and the feud ended with neither man landing a single blow. Now, Matt Sorum has done a number of interviews over the past couple of years. He was promoting his last solo record he put out, and he also did an interview back in 2014 where he talked about his love of Tom Petty. He said, I have a full recording studio. Like I said, I've done film scores and produced a lot. I have a love for good music. I love Tom Petty, Joni Mitchell, David Bowie, Bob Dylan, Lou Reed, and so much diverse stuff, your typical hard rock, such as Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. I love all that too. So 
So in 2013, Matt Sorum was promoting his solo record, Fierce Joy, and he talked about a song on the record called Blue, and you can listen to the song on YouTube. He said, I, was, I wrote another song called Blue. I was thinking, why does the word blue always mean sadness? I wrote it as a positive song, the sky, the water. It's a Tom Petty meets David Gray kind of song. It's pretty cool. So in 2015, there was a story going around the internet that the Guns N' Roses song Sweet Child of Mine sounded a little familiar to the Australian band Australian Crawl. Now they had a song from 1981 called Unpublished Critics, and Duff McHagan was doing press around this time promoting his second book, um, yeah, How to Be a Man and Other Illusions, and he was being interviewed on Opie Radio, and he said at that point Guns were trying to be so original and different to do our own thing. There's there's just no way we would have referenced any so, anything. So if there's any similarity, it's complete happenstance. He added that it was inevitable that some songs sound the same. He also said, any bands I've been in, you do the small check for comparisons. You always run into Free Fallen by Tom Petty. It's always some Tom Petty song, right? He's the master for anything with three chords. It's always a Tom Petty track or a Stone song. Now, if you guys are subscribed to my channel, you would know that we interviewed Guns N' Roses' former manager, Vicki Hamilton, earlier this week. And we interviewed her on uh, Sunday, which was the day before all these stories came out about Tom Petty possibly passing away. And she talked about in the interview how Tom Petty was a big inspiration behind her getting started in the music industry. So she was working for a newspaper called the Three Rivers Review. And she did an interview where she said, I fell in love with Tom Petty. And she said that had been a motivating push for her to get out of her Indiana life. So she said, I fell in love with Tom Petty the moment I saw his face on the cover of his debut album, Hamilton wrote. On her way to one of his concerts, she spotted his tour bus and with the youth's uninhibited courage, jumped out and rocked right in front of the man himself. Hi, my name is Vicki Hamilton. I would like to interview she you. She did, and with his advice echoing in her ear, you look like a California girl. You should just move there. And she said that's what she did. And she set out on the biggest adventure of her life. So that basically does it for my look back at the true story between Guns N' Roses and Tom Petty. I was kind of a late adopter in terms of like being a fan of his band and you know the different bands he's been in. I discovered his music probably a little differently than a lot of people who are maybe watching this video. I really didn't know much about his music up until like 2009 when you know I was really into the game Rock Band 2 and they would be releasing new songs every week and they released a ton of Tom Petty DLC you know they had I think a t they must have released like a total of 15 or 16 17 of his songs on the platform and that's how I really became familiar with his music and that's how I really began to enjoy his music a lot I don't think had it been for Rock Band 2 I probably wouldn't have even known about him as much I heard some of his songs on the radio and on TV shows and um, so I was really bummed out to hear that you know he may have passed away at least from the news reports that were coming out yesterday so that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget, we interviewed Vicki Hamilton earlier this week, so go check out the full interview on my channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below. Please share the video if you enjoyed it, and please go subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos just like this, and if you're a Guns N' Roses fan. Be also uh, sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to my social media channels are down below as well. And you can also go support my channel on Patreon. The link to my Patreon page is also in the description box with my social media site sticker.